Looks like you really enjoy Detroit. It's good to have you back. Nice to be back. Your purring is not getting caught by the mic. Oh, special appearance by Picaro. Hello everyone, it's your boy Kel and welcome back to Detroit. Detroit become a cat. He griff ow. Your claws. Your claws are piercing my skin. <laughs> you see that grip? Do you see that grip? Oh that grip. Oh that grip. Are you familiar with Schrodinger's cat? This cat right Until here? You decide what happens. Everything is happening at once. Like in Detroit. Are you Schrodinger's cat? Or are you my cat? This is Lucas cat. Mm. Right, let me do my intro. Hello everyone, it's your boy Kale. I already said that. Welcome back to Detroit. This is part two of the second run. I don't really know what to name these episodes. It's my first time playing a game like over again right after I finish. Episode B. This is part two of the second run, what I like to call the anti-Luke run, because we're doing things like that I wouldn't normally do in the second run. So what I did was I created a new profile on my console and I had to replay the whole game from the beginning to catch up with where we were uh, in the last video. And I'll catch you guys up on what exactly the choices I made were. But uh, we're gonna keep playing some more today. At first I thought this second one, maybe I was just going to explore some like major- If you find the game too easy or too difficult, Remember, you can change the difficulty settings in the options section. I thought maybe I was going to explore like some different choices, like the major choices, but to get the full experience, you really kind of need to play through the whole game over again so that your choices will have like a long lasting uh, impact. So uh, I don't know if many people are going to be interested in watching a second run, but if you're watching right now, I guess you are. So thank you for watching. Let's keep this going. So without any further ado, let's jump right back in. So in the hostage, you can use this chart to replay from any point in the story. So in the hostage, I did actually manage to save the hostage. What I did was I brought the gun and I shot Daniel and that actually managed to save the hostage. So that was like a little bit different than what we've seen before. Uh, Shades of color, I did everything the same as we've seen. In a new home, I did everything the same. In the painter, I ended up playing some piano, but it was all basically the same. In partners, I did the same. We uh, I got all the evidence and we did find the android. Now in Stormy Night, in the first video I had Alice shoot Todd, which I didn't even know was something that's possible, but uh, in this version I decided to shoot Todd with Kara because I wanted to be able to keep the gun and also I don't think like Alice should be the one to kill Todd, like it's kind of, that's kind of dark, right? So instead of her having to live with kind of that weight and that responsibility, I decided that Kara should be the one to do it and now I was able to keep the gun, so that's gonna open up some new doors in the future. Uh, broken, we did everything the same. Interrogation, in the last video I had it where the android shot itself uh, and I tried to have it where like he would shoot himself and Connor because I wanted to see what happens if Connor dies in this chapter but I actually didn't get that ending. Instead I got the ending where the android just gets saved and we get the confession so Connor didn't die. So oh well. Now in Fugitives I did the same thing that we saw in the uh, video that I watched which is we slept in the abandoned house and we got to meet Ralph because I thought it was really interesting that we get to meet this new character that's not in the run that I did originally. However, I didn't change my clothes. So we're still in like in the usual clothes, which is different than my original run. And also because I had the gun, I was able to rob the dude in the store. And so we stole the wire cutter and also I stole a toy for Alice. Uh, I did play through From the Dead off screen just because there's not much choice in this chapter. Like the only thing I did different was I did kill that android by stealing their heart for Marcus. But everything else is the same as usual so uh, it didn't really seem worth it to replay uh, in the video itself. So we're gonna jump straight into waiting for Hank this time. So because I'm now playing on a brand new flowchart, if I try to do something new and then it results in my character dying, I will be able to just replay the chapter and like try something different instead which I couldn't have done on my original run. Here we are in our mine palace I guess. 
Amanda. There's that stone, that exit door out of the program, which I spent the whole game wondering what it was, and that's what it was. So would there have been any other hints that this place is fake? I mean... It looks quite real in these first few chapters that you see it. Could have just been like a garden that belongs to Cyberlife somewhere. Although the architecture is a little bit, you know. But could have still been real. So in this run, I guess we're going to go the full uh, non-deviant route with Connor. Hello, Amanda. Connor, it's good to see you. Good to see you. Congratulations, Connor. Finding that deviant was far from easy. And the way you interrogated it was very clever. Mm. You've been remarkably efficient, Connor. That's Thank what I've you, been Amanda. designed to do. We've asked the DPD to transfer it to us for further study. It may teach us something about what happened. The interrogation huh. seemed... challenging. What did you think of the deviant? Um, simulation? It simulated human emotion, fear in particular, in a very convincing way. Yeah, Seemed very convincing. overwhelmed by them and behaved irrationally. This Lieutenant Anderson has been officially assigned to the deviancy case. What do you make of him? Unpleasant. <laughs> I find him unpleasant and unprofessional. He seems to have an addictive personality, has a lack of respect for procedure, and despises androids, which makes our relationship mm. difficult. Unfortunately, we have no choice but to work with him. I think that's going to be the hardest part of this run, is being mean to Anderson, because I really like their relationship so much. What like... do you think is the best approach? Um, We will adapt. I will adapt to his personality. It is in the best interest of the investigation oh, that I like avoid that? conflict and try to accommodate his psychology. Seems pretty smart to me. I thought more she would like and that. More androids show signs of deviancy. There are millions in circulation. Not me. If they become unstable, the consequences will be disastrous. You're the most advanced prototype Cyberlife has ever created. If anyone can figure out what's happening, it's you. You can count on me, Amanda. I wonder what exactly makes Connor more advanced than the others. Hurry, Connor. Like, what specifically? Because we've seen him do a few things that the others can do. Like, he's got all these investigative tools, you know, like testing blood and stuff like that, which I don't think someone like Connor could do. But what about his brain? Like, we saw it took him quite a long time to turn Deviant originally. Is that because he is more advanced? Like he's more resistant to the deviancy, maybe? Because Marcus and Kara turned very quickly. Also, in editing my first run, I did spot Todd here. Oh, but I can't see him this time because he's dead. I was going to say, I'm going to try and uh, see him this time. And like actually see if I can talk to him, but I can't because he's dead now. So, oh well. And also, of course, I don't want this uh, second run to be quite as long as the first, so I will be going through things much faster. Can I help you? I'm here to see Lieutenant Anderson. So Amanda said that they were going to transfer... Oh, look, you can see this guy being taken to his cell. <laughs> By this other guy. I don't see... Oh yeah, he's still there, see? You can see the android back there. Even though Amanda said he was gonna get transferred, I guess he hasn't been yet. Interesting. So because we're keeping things faster this time, I'm not even going to look at, like, all the stuff on Anderson's desk. We're just going to wait for him. Let's wait. Connor, why don't you eat a donut while you wait? <laughs> the way he just sits, he's so like... Hi. Okay. What, are you bored already, Connor? 
so impatient. Go see the Deviant. Oh, yeah, yeah. But he's going to self-destruct if I go see him, right? Hey, man. They're going to destroy me. Let's be cold, because that's the least thing I would do. My objective was to capture you alive. You can die now. What happens now is not my problem. Oh, so cold. I know there's something you didn't tell me. Is there? I need to know before they take you away. What R9 is? The statuette? The sculpture you made. Tell me more about it. What was it of? I'm going to die. Yeah, why would he tell me after I was just such a dick to him? <laughs> he has really no reason to tell me. And then he's like, you know what? I'm going to do it myself. Open the cell, quick! Hurry! This Connor would just walk away. Does not even care. This is like Terminator Connor. Termi Connor. Oh, this is what I missed because uh, originally it was a magazine about Carl dying. So I never got to read this. And I feel like this would have maybe told me more about Alice. The three laws of robotic parenting. Family life has never been easier. When Cyberlife initially released their child range, the public were skeptical of purchasing a family. Now the collection is one of Cyberlife's best sellers, but is this really a surprise? Customizable, removable LED. Okay, so they even point out, you can just take it out. If it's too distracting, just remove it. That doesn't seem like something that people should be able to do. Just because then they can't connect to things? Or is it just like a display? You wouldn't really want Android to pass for a human, right? Just for like security reasons? No hunger. They do not eat the spaghetti. No expensive childcare. No new clothes. And not to mention no smelly diapers. Do they sell Android babies? That would be really weird. But I guess they do, because they talk about diapers. Or do they just mean that you skip the diaper phase of having children? The perfect child is only a click away. All it needs can be suspended at the touch of a button. It's child's play. It's the stress-free solution for career-oriented parents, those struggling to have their own children, or miss having a youngster at home. Yeah. I mean, it does make sense. With unemployment at 37%, $7,000 for a child that avoids the dreaded teenage years and shelling out for college seems like a wise investment compared to $350,000 over 17 years. Plus, it doesn't have to be a lifelong commitment because you can just get rid of it whenever you want. But sociologist Mary Wallace argues that these androids are leading fewer parents to have children at a time when our birth rates are already far too low. But then in another magazine, we read about how there's like overpopulation, like they have like 10 billion people on Earth. So like, who cares about birth rates? Contributing to what she terms the baby doom. Jason Graff, director of humanization at Cyberlife, dismisses these claims as the usual resistance to new ideas, calling these new androids a triumph of humanization design. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, there he is. It's good to see you again, Lieutenant. Oh, Jesus. Hank! In my office! So we can either enter and listen in. Last time I went in kind of like late, so this time let's listen to it from the beginning. Let's try and hear the whole thing. I've got ten new cases involving androids on my desk every day. We've always had isolated incidents. Old ladies losing their android maids and that kind of crap. But now, we're getting reports of assaults and even homicide like that guy last night. This isn't just Cyberlife's problem anymore. It's now a criminal investigation and we've got to deal with it before the shit hits the fan. I want you to investigate these cases and see if there's any link. Why me? Why do I got to be the one to deal with this shit? I am the least qualified cop in the country to handle this case. I know jack shit about androids, Jeffrey. 
I can barely change the settings on my own phone. Everybody's overloaded. I think you're perfectly qualified for this type of investigation. Bullshit! The truth is, nobody wants to investigate these fucking androids, and you let me hold in the bag. Why wouldn't they Cyberlife want to? Cyberlife sent over this android to help with the investigation. It's a state-of-the-art prototype. It'll act as your partner. No fucking way! I don't need a partner, and certainly not this plastic prick. Hank, you are seriously starting to piss me off. You are a police lieutenant. You are supposed to do what I say and shut your goddamn mouth. You know what my goddamn mouth has to say to you? Okay. Huh? Okay. I'll pretend like I didn't hear that. So I don't have to add any more pages to your disciplinary folder, because it already looks like a fucking novel. This conversation is over. Jeffrey, Jesus Christ, why are you doing this to me? You know how much I hate these fucking things. Why are you doing this to me? Listen. I've had just about enough of your bitch. Either you do your job or you hand in your badge. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got work to do. I mean, this case or another one, like, who cares? <laughs> Let's just be positive. I'm very pleased to have joined the team. I can assure you I'll do my very Close best. Close the door on your way out. <laughs> Certainly, Captain. Have a nice day, Captain. Yeah, yeah. This poor guy can have it like any privacy because all of his walls are like windows, so like everyone can see what he's doing at all time. This is the guy that was at the case last night. What's his name? Collins. Um Pragmatic. Oh, one of them is locked. Let's be pragmatic. Listen, I know you don't like me, but we're going to have to work together. We'll both have to make an effort. In any case, I'd like you to know I'm very happy to be working with you. <laughs> I'm sure we'll make a great team. He looks so dorky when he smiles. <laughs> Uh. Now that we're partners, it would be great to get to know each other better. Is there a desk anywhere I could use? No one's using that one. But whenever you get down to working, he's always, you know, he always responds. So he might complain about it, but he's still doing his job just fine. So, in the original run, they went to the motel because Kara was there. So this time, are they going to investigate the house? Or are they just going to skip this chapter? If you have any files on Deviants, I'd like to take a look at them. Terminal's on your desk. Knock yourself out. There's the Jerry's. Oh, this is straight up north. See, this was before we met her, so I didn't know this was her, but this has to be about north, right? The manager of the Eden Club reported the unexplained disappearance of a sex android. The android disappeared after accompanying a customer to his home and never returned to the club. Yeah, this is north. And then they give you the option to scan all files, so I didn't keep reading all the other ones, but there's more. Leo Manfred was found unconscious in the home of his father. Oh, this is about Marcus. The latter's witness statement attests to an altercation between his son and the house android. The android is thought to be a prototype, unknown model and serial number, and was destroyed at the scene by attending officers. Okay, so this one is marked as destroyed. Case solved. And we got Kara. Oh, victim Todd Williams, and this one's a homicide. Yeah, because we killed him this time. The victim's body was found by a friend who came by to say hello. I don't believe that. Todd didn't have any friends. It was probably a guy that came by for like a drug deal. <laughs> he immediately called the emergency service at 8.42, recorded dead by gunshot wound. The murder weapon may have belonged to the victim. His android and AX400 was not found on the scene and is the main suspect. Okay. So if you scan here, you just miss the later two, which are actually the people you know. Let's scan all files. 243 files. Damn, that's a First lot. dates back nine months. It all started in Detroit and quickly spread across the country. Pay attention, Hank. An AX400 is reported to have murdered a man last night. 
That could be a good starting point for our investigation. Aggressive. If the situation doesn't suit you, Lieutenant, you should ask to be relieved of duties and let me work with someone else. I know exactly what I have to do. So keep your advice to yourself and mind your own business. Fuck it. Resign the mission? It's threatened. I'm going to file a report with my superiors that you refuse to work on this investigation. He's going to punch me. Listen, asshole. If it was up to me, I'd throw the lot of you in a dumpster and set a match to it. So stop pissing me off. Or things are gonna get nasty. Uh, Lieutenant? Uh, Lieutenant? I'm <laughs> sorry to disturb you. I have some information on the AX-400 that killed the guy last night. It's been sighted in the Ravendale district. I'm on it. But we actually got the same result with Hank, even when we were being nice to him, so... Eh. I'm surprised someone found Todd right away. Like, I thought it would take days before anyone found him, because, like, there's no way he has friends. Hank got a lead. Hank is mad. <laughs> so the first few chapters were more or less the same, but I feel like now we're really going to start seeing some big differences. Like this one, for example, this is all going to be new. So is she still going to cut her hair? Is she going to find some new clothes? He's going to make it much harder to hide if we keep these clothes. Where's Ralph? I guess he just slept. Revived the fire. Did he just sleep in the other room? Huh. What is that? Bird? Money? Is that a real bird? Oh, just a dead bird. Well, that's depressing. Don't show me that! I mean, these are his belongings, right? I probably shouldn't be touching that. But we might need the money more than him. Uh, let's not steal from Ralph. He might need this. Plus, we already stole some money last night, so... Don't worry, Ralph. I'm not stealing your things. RA9. Yeah, it's quite interesting that Ralph has this, like, impulse to write RA9. But Kara doesn't have that. Oh, it's one of his models. Yeah, he's the same model as the garbage man. Oh. This was the same magazine that was in the hotel. Oh, this was this is the one I wasn't able to read. Canada still Android free zone. And hopefully I'm not on a timer. Despite the United States voting in its Android Act as early as 2028, the Canadian Parliament has yet again pushed back its decision on whether to permit androids in the country. As a result, androids are still not sold in Canada and have no official status in the country. Interesting. With androids continuing to fuel unprecedented growth in the US economy yet contributing to record levels of unemployment, the arguments for and against putting them on sale in Canada rages on. But for the time being, Canada remains an android free zone. I mean, there has to be some of them around, right? Just because people like bring them, they cross the frontier. Um, they're just not sold officially. So, interesting. Quite interesting. So we got more wood here. Hey, we got an arcade. Maybe uh, Alice can play some of that later. Okay. Let's start by reviving the fire. Change appearance? Find new clothes. Okay, so she changes her appearance no matter what. What if you sleep in the car? If you sleep in the car, she really has nowhere to 
do that. We might explore the outcome of sleeping in the car later. But again, I would have to replay the whole thing. Wait until Alice wakes. We can check on her. Look at this fake sleep. You faker. I mean, I guess it's just part of her programming as a child. She still needs to... Hmm. But Alice is a deviant. And yet, she's still following her programming as a child because she still needs to sleep. She still feels cold, stuff like that. Like, she could just decide not to do these things, right? Because, like, she gets to disobey her programming, but I guess it's not really the same. There's your programming, and then there's the directives you were given by humans, and that's the thing that usually they break through. Like, Todd telling Kara, don't move, she broke through that, and then Marcus being told, don't defend yourself, and he broke through that. Hey, now we get to explore the upstairs. Oh, maybe we got some clothes in here. So is she gonna have like different clothes in this version? Oh. Interesting. We still have the gun. I wonder if it's gonna come into play later. Doesn't fit her quite as well as the clothes you can find in the laundry thing, but... Cut hair. So she's still going to cut her hair, huh? There's the hotel in front. Oh yeah, Connor and Hank are definitely coming here. Oh, I left the... Yeah, let's not forget it. So you get a chance to not have it with you here, because she drops it. But then you can pick it up again. Interesting. How is she going to cut her hair, though? Oh. Okay, there's a bathroom here. And a mirror. Do we have any scissors anywhere? Oh, right there. Look at that. How convenient. She actually manages to give herself, like, a pretty good haircut, considering she's just doing it, like, you know, herself, and she has no real, like, look at that, just instantly, this perfect little pixie cut. And this time we will change colors. What about white? White hair? Ooh, look at that, just magic. Ooh, black. So... See, I didn't- I wasn't sure if you get to uh, alternate between them last time. Black hair, blonde, brown. Do we go white hair? She's got like a dark coat. Let's go with white hair. That looks pretty cool, yeah. Nice. Let's get rid of that shit. It's weird that you can just take it off and then it doesn't leave any mark, like there's no hole, there's nothing. The skin is like self-repairing. How strange. She really is dressed right now like someone who's trying to... Like, tr trying to be undercover. Uh-oh. What's going to happen to Ralph? Alright, that's all for now. Okay, they're here. There you go. Oh, it's the guy from the bus. He's the one that reported us. You've got officers sweeping the neighborhood in case anybody saw anything. Okay, well, let me know if they turn anything up. What are you going to do with that? I have no idea. 
God, the way he turned his eyes. So creepy. So what do we got here? Bus driver saw it at 2.30. So bus driver so reported us. Store. It stole wire cutters. There must be a reason. Wire cutters? What the fuck are you talking about? I checked the CCTV while you were questioning the clerk. Oh, wow. The Android wow. was caught on camera stealing it. It had wire cutters. It was looking for a place to hide. Wow. So, what's your conclusion, Sherlock? Connor's gonna be like, it's in this house because it has a fence. You're Maybe so clever. He's so clever. Man, there's really no escaping him. He really would be like the perfect detective. <laughs> what Rob the fuck are you doing? Okay, to well. past misunderstandings. <laughs> Rap will cook. We will do just like humans do. Humans like burnt meat. <laughs> Come yeah, some of us Come do. Sit down. <laughs> well, you had good intentions, but uh, why is my sit like all messed up there? That's very kind of you. Raj. It's very kind of you, but we kind of have, have to, to go, go. Yeah. Go. <laughs> No, you will go once the little girl is eaten. Uh, we will eat together, just like a family. The father, the mother, and the little girl. Hmm. <laughs> um. No. No, Ralph. We really have to now. leave. Come on, Alice. The little girl's going nowhere. Okay, Ralph. I see you're gonna be a problem. We have the gun. Mm. We can try and explain. Why is our text all messed up? It's never done that before with Humans Kara. Don't eat that, Ralph. Humans eat dead animals. I know that. Mm. You're not going to hurt her, are you? We're friends. Remember? Remember? No, Ralph doesn't want to hurt the little girl. Ralph feels just a little bit off his he meds. Just wants her to eat. <laughs> That's all. Okay, well, I guess we don't have a choice. Okay. The police is gonna come in here and just like <laughs> fucking we'll light him up. Eat together. Like a family. <laughs> oh, he's so happy. That's better. <laughs> well, Ralph, eat this fucking beaver you found. Find something for the little girl to eat. It wouldn't be polite for her to refuse, would it? I'm glad she's not a real girl, cause like, she's really going through something right now. It's going to be great. <laughs> succulent, you'll see. Succulent. 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 <laughs> That's so sad. He's like trying to be like a real human. Please, Cara. I don't want to eat that. What did she say? She said she doesn't fucking want to eat it. She said she doesn't want to eat it. Well, maybe it's not good enough. Yeah, do you have some maybe. like salt and pepper, she maybe? Better things. But Ralph did this for her, so she's going to eat. No, she's not. Go ahead. Eat. She's looking to me for help. <laughs> okay, you need to chill the fuck down. I'm being as trigger happy as I can in this run because that's like the furthest thing from me usually. Oh, Connor's like, what did I just walk into? Okay, no, he's still outside. 
Like, usually I would not be so trigger happy, but because it's so unlike me, that's what I want to do in the second run, because I'm trying to see, like, different things, you know? Things I wouldn't usually see. He's gonna be like, what the hell is going on in there? Android inside the house, yeah. I'm actually... Is Connor going to intervene in this situation? That's so interesting. He's gonna see me with the gun. Oh, they already left. I guess she didn't shoot him then. Are there any other androids here? Ralph just wanted to be nice. Ralph wanted to help. Where is it? You see right out the back door. Connor, what's going on? It's in the area. Call it in. Which way did it go? That way. They're headed for the train station. Can Connor catch Kara? I wonder. Let's see. And what happens if you catch her? Let's find out. They're over there. Look at that, they get to meet face to face. Interesting. Don't shoot, we need it alive. It's like much more intense than if you're at the hotel. Oh, fuck. That's insane. Ooh. Sorry. Oh lord. Oh lord. That is so dangerous. Hey, okay, she could have probably died there. Can't let them get away. They won't. They'll never make it to the other side. I can't take that chance. Now you will get yourself killed. Do not go after him, Connor. That's an order. I'm going. Connor! God damn it! Why is that software instability? He's he's following his programming right now. Oh lord, oh Jesus, oh! Woo. They're both taking so many risks right now. Oh, he's probably gonna get hit. Ooh! He actually said shit. <laughs> That's the train station with Marcus. Oh no, okay. Wow, they actually made it out. This is much more intense, damn. Are you okay? He's like, I don't know if you're really the best person to take care of me. <laughs> Well, look, I got you out, didn't I? I'm sorry you almost had to eat that beaver. Damn. Okay, so in the middle of the flowchart, it turns into Connor pursues Kara. So I guess usually when you escape by like stealth, it's just this one up there. I still missed a bunch of stuff down there, huh. Damn, like, even two playthroughs is not gonna be nearly enough to see everything that can happen in this game. It's really quite impressive just how many things can happen. Does she still have the gun at this point? Ralph wants a family meal. Yeah, we missed like a bunch of stuff here. I wonder what else can happen. Right, I'm skipping past this whole chapter because it's pretty much exactly the same. No matter what you do, there's no choices here. It's just going from point A to point B getting inside the Jericho with Marcus. So, next. Oh. <laughs> Damn, you almost got hit? <laughs> I don't remember that. Reconcile with Lieutenant Anderson. Hey, 
Listen, I got a shit hot tip for you. Time to stick my nose in their business. Lickety split. That Philly's one hell of a chaser. You wanna flood it? Last shit hot tip you gave me sent me back a week's wages, baby. Come on, this is different. It's a hundred percent guaranteed. You can't go wrong. What kind of tip? Oh, I could have scanned him? I didn't do that last time because I wanted to give him his space, you know, I didn't want to intrude in his business. Abdar Pedro, unemployed criminal record, illegal gambling fraud. Uh, am I gonna get to intervene right, here? Man. Damn straight. Hey, you won't regret this. I think you might regret it. I would like a hamburger, please. What is your problem? Don't you ever do as you're told? Look, you don't have to follow me around like a poodle. Oh yeah, we're supposed to reconcile, but I don't want to do that. I want to antagonize him. I thought now might be a good time to review what we know about deviants. No, now is not a good time to review anything. Now is my lunch break, so just... Go into standby and cut me some slack, okay? Here you go. I've never had a hamburger before, but I'd like to. An extra large soda. Pineapple passion. How about that? Of course it's extra large. This is the United States, baby. Don't leave that thing here. Uh, not a chance. Follows me everywhere. I would like to order an Android hamburger, please. No? Okay. Does look like a nice hamburger. Gambling? This Pedro? He was proposing illegal gambling. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you made a bet. Yeah. Yeah. Counters like does not compute like you're a policeman doing illegal stuff. Your meal contains 1.4 times the recommended daily intake of calories and twice the cholesterol level. You shouldn't eat that. Everybody's got to die of something. Oh, he actually liked that. Interesting. That's strange. Sorry, just adjusting my camera there. Um. Maybe I should tell you what we know about deviants. You read my mind. Proceed. We believe that a mutation occurs in the software of some androids, which can lead to them emulating a human emotion. In English, please. You they don't know the word emulating, Hank? They just get overwhelmed by irrational instructions, which can lead to unpredictable behavior. Emotions always screw everything up. The androids aren't as different from us as we thought. <laughs> you ever dealt with deviants before? A few months back, a deviant was threatening to jump off the roof with the little girl. I managed to save her. So I guess you've done all your homework, right? Know everything there is to know about me? Actually, no. I know you graduated top of your class. No, I should have tried lying. yourself in several cases and became the youngest lieutenant in Detroit. I also know you've received several disciplinary warnings in recent years, and you spend a lot of time in bars. So what's your conclusion? It's be cold. I'm focused on the case, Lieutenant. I don't care about you. Not here to make judgments. I just got a report of a suspected deviant. It's a few blocks away. You should go have a look. I'll let you finish your meal. Hank is I'll hostile right now. Me. It's 
So as expected, the relationship is going much worse than in the original run. Hey, Connor. You ran out of batteries or what? I'm sorry. I was making a report to Cyberlife. Huh. Well, do you plan on staying in the elevator? No. I'm coming. I love that delivery. Hey, what do we know about this guy? Not much. Anybody home? Open up, Detroit police! Stay behind me. Got it. They still work quite well together, even if you're hostile. Like, he still tries to protect you. It's his good guy instincts kicking in, you know? You just can't help it. Okay, the one important thing here is the diary. Go ahead. What the fuck is this? A shit ton of pigeons. Uh, uh, Jesus, this place stinks. Well, uh, looks like we came for nothing. I wouldn't be so sure, Lieutenant. Four hundred and seventy-one times. It's the same sign Ortiz's android wrote on the shower wall. Why are they obsessed with this sign? No, even though I finished the game, I still Looks don't like really know what RA9 is. Right. So maybe we will find out in this run. Maybe you only find out in the non-deviant Connor run. Sir, Take the faster routes. Look out. I think risky just means you get more uh, quick time events that you need to succeed. I'm pretty confident. Alright, this time of course we will go after the Deviant instead of helping Hank. <laughs> Hang's gonna be fine. Please. I've done nothing wrong. I just wanted to be free. You know what they'll do to me if you turn me in. Eight seven four zero zero four nine six one. Serious malfunctions have been detected in your software, including class four errors. You've been deemed defective. 
and will be sent back to Cyberlife for deactivation. I think he's just gonna jump. Don't you fucking move. You bastard. You saw I was gonna fall and you'd rather let me die than fail your fucking mission. I had to make a choice. It seemed to me... What am I to you? A statistic? A zero? A one in your fucking program? Huh? Fair. Is that how you see humans, you bastard? Jesus. I understand you're upset. Perhaps I didn't assess the Fuck situation. you and your fucking assessment. Come here. Why are you doing this? All right. You're one of us. Shut up. You're helping humans. But you're just their slave. I said shut up. Come on, Hank. Don't. Don't assault the man. Come along. Okay, no, we actually caught him. Oh. Holy shit. Well. Don't blame me, I caught him. Androids. <laughs> Poor Hank. This is the non-canon Hank. My first run was canon. Rupert committed suicide. Then what's the other option? We just don't catch him, I guess? Right, right. The other option is he runs away, but we save Hank. Okay. Hmm. I believe this chapter goes the same way every time, right? I guess that's why I wasn't so invested in the Marcus chapters earlier on, is because they don't have a lot of choices compared you? to the other ones. Fugitives. Just like you. My name is Josh. I'm Simon. North. And you knew that only an android could follow the trail, didn't you? Only those who are like us can find Jericho. If you could decipher the signs, it's because one of us trusted you enough to give you the key. This place where we can be free. I don't know if that guy really trusted me. He seemed kind of in a panic. <laughs> and hiding just to stay alive, that's freedom to you? Humans hate us. Hiding is the only way we can survive. There is no safe place for those like us. If humans knew we were here, they'd kill us. How many are you? There are 19 of us still in working order. The rest were damaged escaping their masters. Many tried to reach Jericho. If you succeed, humans have little pity for our kind. Who was the first one? I understand how you feel. You never established who was the first we have person more freedom to come here, here than you ever did. Waiting in the dark for something to happen? That's not how I see freedom. You're lost. Just like the rest of us. We didn't ask for this. All we can do now is deal with it. In this one, our Marcus is going to be a real revolutionary. You can stay with us as long as you want. The violent kind. Which you could argue is more realistic. You can't really lead a revolution the peaceful route, but... Drink this. I love how it just comes in a bottle, like anything else. Yeah, they probably can't eat hand. any food because if they have to drink the blue blood, that means it probably goes straight to their like fuel reserve or whatever. So if you were to put like a hot dog in there, it would just like mess up their whole system probably. Maybe the children ones are built different, but I don't know. She's got one of the Baldur's Baldur's Gate 3 uh <laughs> eye tattoos. You had it all. And you lost it all. You've seen hell, and now hell lives in you. And now there will be hell to pay for That's everyone. Right Your choices will shape our destiny. I know where we can find spare parts. Cyber Life Warehouse is in Detroit Harbor. They have everything we need. The docks are guarded. We can't just walk in there and take what we want. Humans will never let us. Which is why we won't ask permission. We don't have any weapons. 
And even if we did, none of us knows how to fight. We can steal what we need without fighting. We'll just get ourselves killed. Maybe. But it's better than waiting here to be shut down. I'm with you. Maybe it's worth a try. Now, naturally, just because I'm going the more violent route, I think North is going to like us more, but does that mean we're going to enter the romance anyways? I guess it depends on how you talk to her, but... Is this going to be the fucking Zlatko chapter? Oh boy. Now... Okay. Zlatko. This is quite a long chapter. Now, I'm guessing the main outcome is that you escape Zlatko and Luther joins you. I have to imagine every other outcome in this chapter means that Kara dies, right? If he catches you while you're trying to escape, you probably die. If you remain like with your memory reset and you just don't do anything, that's probably where her story ends too. Like, I don't think there's a follow-up chapter if Kara gets reset here. So I'm going to pretty much do it similarly to the first time. Like, we're not really going to witness all that much new. Like, maybe the chase sequence can might go... Actually, I want to see if you can not get reset. Because uh, I wasn't able to in my first run. But there has to be a way where you don't get reset, maybe. But other than that, it's going to go pretty much similar to the first run. Because I want the follow-up chapters, you know. We'll get some help here. Soon this will all be just a bad memory. Soon this will all be another bad memory to add to all of your list of bad memories, this of which you place. have many. This time we're going to free the polar bear for sure. <laughs> I didn't last time, but I'm going to this time. Look at this. Are you Zlatko? Bitch. Who's asking? I was told you could help us. I don't know who told you that. You came to the wrong place. I'm sorry. Wait. We really need your help. Because he thinks they're human, and then as soon as he notices, oh, she's an android. And that little girl. She's an android too, I know that model. He's like, yeah, sure, come in. I'm a piece of shit, sure. Come in. We're just getting Alice through like traumatic experience after traumatic experience after traumatic experience. Come on in, don't be shy. Luther, would you be so kind as to take these ladies' coats? Oh, don't be afraid of big boy big friend here. She's looking cool with the white hair. I like that. I should have done that. <laughs> all androids are fitted with a tracking device to locate them at all times. I'll remove yours and then you'll both be safe. Come on. Follow me. I knew he was a Fucking liar! As soon as he talked oh, about this the tracker. One can wait for us in the living room. No, she always stays with me. Of course. That's what you get for having a dream. It always ends up the same way: tears and disillusionment. Believe me, you're better off being erased and feeling nothing. No more pain. Don't put your no more sad Hope ideals on me. Just because Almost you've had a me. shit life. Cara! <laughs> oh, poor little Alice. Oh, looks like mommy doesn't remember you at all, huh? Looks like mommy's completely forgotten you. <laughs> you have to be such a dick about it. Oh, all right, that's enough. Come on. I missed her biting him again. I'm gonna teach you some manners, you little bitch. Kara! Wake up, Kara! Meet me in the living room. Oh. 
Alright, how do I stop this thing? You don't get a lot of time here. Um... Oh, got some water there that could help. Okay, what else? What else? Sorry, up. Yellow cable. Wait, the light, the light. I remember there was a light. Let's hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Yes, that might short circuit, right? Yeah? Does that do anything? Ooh, okay, I think that... Nice, nice. work. Oh, okay. So we managed to free ourselves without being reset this time. Nice. But we're gonna have to pretend... Oh, wow. She can just repair it. She's like, eh, it's corrupted. Okay, I remember now. <laughs> just like that, huh? Okay. There's my friend over there. Hello. Okay, we need to free these guys. Help us. Of course. But of course I'm going to help you. Uh, is, what is Luther gonna do if I'm not deviant? Luther! Luther! I guess nothing. Yes, Lockle. Should be done here in ten minutes or so. Have a look at the little one, see what I can, can do with it. Understood, Slacker. From his wording, wording, I really should have known. So could we, like, pretend that we're... Is there, like, a checkpoint in this? Monsters. No checkpoints. See? They have these long-ass chapters without any checkpoints. That, that's what sucks. Uh, you want to try something else? You have to start over from the very beginning. R A nine again. Let's free that bear. Oh, hello. Got someone on the floor there. I'm just passing through. Who's a big bear? Who's a good bear? Okay, so he does not attack you, but he's going to come into play later, I'm sure. Hello? Y'all good? Hope he doesn't no scream or anything. No Luther is on standby, so I think we should be fine. Detroit today, Arctic tensions escalate. 
Uh, androids alter your brain. Talking to machines is changing the way we communicate. Oh, I, I didn't see this one before. Okay. We'll have to read this one in the extras. Like, why do we leave the gun there? She should... It's not loaded. Like, even though there's no bullets, don't just put it back there. Just take it with you. Stupid. This is stupid. Could take that with you. No? A Detroit supermarket was held up at gunpoint last Hey, night. that's me. The cashier reports that he was attacked by an android in the company of a little girl. That's me. Did he call it a supermarket? It was a convenience store, not a market. There you is. Alice. Car. Car, you remember me? How could I forget you? I'm so sorry. You were right. We never should have come here. We have to go. Follow me and don't make any noise, okay? Last time we tried hiding under the table, and that didn't really work, like he found us right away. Luther! Yes, Zarko. I'm finished here. Go fetch the little one. Right away, Zarko. Right, right, you can't come through there. Let's go to the big room. It says to hide, but like he's not gonna come through there. Oh, we can take the log. Oh yeah, that's set fire. Let's burn this whole somewhere. fucking house. What you Don't worry. They'll be here soon. Go yep, let's get out. Smoke everywhere. Can we take the gun? There's a fucking fire! Ah, oh, you can't take the gun, that's bullshit. I don't think he saw us. This is stressful. Let's go to where the bear is. Oh, no, we're just going down. Ah, I didn't get to see the bear. Uh, yeah, back door, back door. Front door is probably death because it's locked. Ah, I didn't get to see the bear. <laughs> He probably plays into something. He might come outside. Alice! Go, Alice! No! I won't leave! Go! Run as fast as you can! I warned you! Dreams always end in tears. You should have listened to me. Your, your house is burning, dude. <laughs> Maybe you should take care of that. What are you doing? Get out of my way. No. No. Not this time. I said get out of my way or I'll shoot right through you. How oh, dare Reed you. Reed does not hesitate. Show me the bear. How dare you. What are you doing? Who let you out? Come on, show me the get bear. I love how the girls still get have like little me. panties on. It's better than what he deserves. I hope the bear got out. Aw, oh, what a shame, they don't show him.
Hiç çilek selemi sorak. I know you have no reason to trust me after what I did. But I know someone who could help you across the border. I could take you there. Wonder where he knows Rose from. I could protect you. Does that mean they met before? Excited. Fuck yeah. Oh, I'm so happy. They had just that little shot right at the end there. That's so great. <laughs> yeah, there's probably like a bunch of ways you can die here, but obviously we're not gonna do that. We want the follow-up chapters. Uh, back in the garden. A fucking umbrella for no reason. Hello, Amanda. Connor, I've been expecting you. Would you mind? Of course, you're walk? in my brain. God, we Come really. I'm progressing Connor. much faster than in my TV. first run. Tell me, what did you learn? Uh, not much, really. I found its diary, but it was encrypted. It may take weeks to decipher. Shouldn't take you that long. What else? You're an android after all. The walls of the apartment were covered with drawings of labyrinths and other symbols. Like the other deviants, it seemed obsessed with RA9. You came very close to capturing that deviant. It's a pity you let it self-destruct. I didn't let it. Um Yeah, it was Hank's fault. I knew deviants had a tendency to self-destruct under extreme stress, but I didn't expect it to jump from the roof. I should have anticipated that. How is your relationship with the lieutenant developing? It's very bad. He is openly hostile towards me and continues to show no interest in the investigation. Cooperating with him is a real challenge. We don't have much time. Deviancy continues to spread. It's only Why is it raining in your brain? Finds out about it. Connor. We need to stop this. Whatever it takes. I will solve this investigation, Amanda. I won't disappoint you. A new case just came in. Find Anderson and investigate it. Yes, of course. I guess when you receive that case, like in the previous uh, counter chap, and he goes like, B -b 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 and his eyes are like blinking, that probably like him going through his mind palace and talking to Amanda. That's why it's like a little more strenuous than just say receiving like a a report, you know. Ooh, I don't think there's many ways this chapter can go. Maybe the dog is gonna bite me because I don't know the dog's name this time. <laughs> Um, Hank is hostile also, so he's really not going to be happy about me uh, breaking in. Lieutenant Anderson! Anybody home? The fact this doesn't wake him up. The fact his dog is not even like barking. Usually dogs would react like really strongly to a ringer like that. Oh. Uh, he is unconscious. Lieutenant Anderson! <laughs> Easy. Dog. A dog. I'm, I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm here to save your owner. Okay, so he still doesn't attack you no matter what. 
The way this dog walks around is probably the worst animation in this whole game. <laughs> really looks kind of weird. Lieutenant. <laughs> Wake up, Lieutenant. <laughs> it's me, Connor. Slaps the shit out of him. I'm going to sober you up for your own hey! sake. Hey! I'll have to warn you. Hey! 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 Fucking android. <laughs> Get the fuck out of my house. I'm sorry, Lieutenant, <laughs> but I need you. Thank you in advance for your cooperation. We get the fuck out of here! Seems you kind of react the same way, no matter what. Hey! Hey! Attack! Good job. <laughs> Good job. Attack! What the hell are you doing? <sighs> oh, no. I don't want a bath. Thank you. Sorry, Lieutenant. It's for your own good. Like seeing you here the for the first time. Was reported 43 minutes ago. I couldn't find you at Jimmy's bar, so I came to see if you were at home. <sighs> Jesus, I must be the only cop in the world that gets assaulted in his own house by his own fucking android. Well, technically, I'm not yours. <sighs> Can't you just leave me alone? Aggressive. If you're unable to conduct this investigation, I'll have to inform your superiors. Go ahead, tell them. I don't give a shit. Lieutenant, you're not yourself. You should beat it, you hear me? Get the hell out of here. Hmm. Last time I teased him, and I guess I'm just gonna leave this time. I understand. I sincerely hope you come to terms with your personal situation. This homicide. What do we know about it? A man was found dead in a sex club downtown. The report says that an android may be involved. You know, probably wouldn't do me any harm to get some air. There's some clothes in the bedroom there. I'll go get them. There's also a magazine that I missed in this room. Right there? Can I not? Okay, I guess I can only read it after giving him the clothes. What do you want to wear? Whatever. Let's go hippie. Are you all right, Lieutenant? <coughs> <coughs> yeah, yeah. <sighs> Wonderful. Just, uh... Give me five minutes, okay? Sure. President Warren issued an official warning to Russia in her speech to Congress. There's the magazine we missed. Century time to pull the plug. The Kremlin has yet to respond. Screening for depression. Hmm. Many experts are suggesting the tainted love. I don't think I read this one either. This would have been on topic too for Eden Club, so it's a shame I didn't get to read it in the original run, but I will read it in the extras. Anderson. Actually, I think this is the trigger for him walking back in. No? Oh, yep. Be a good dog. Look at this Simone. walk. I won't be long. Thank you. 
This poor dog, like, living with someone who almost committed suicide, can you imagine? Putting the dog through that and then, like, someone... Someone has to come and take care of him. It would be horrible. Right, and then is the warehouse chapter. There's a few things we could do different here. Last time I didn't bring the androids with me. Uh, any of them, really. Because I didn't know that Marcus could just turn them instantly, so this time I'm definitely going to bring them. This is crazy. If they catch us, we're dead. What do we do now? We need to find the Cyberlife warehouse. That's where they keep the spare parts and the blue blood. Follow me. I wonder if Marcus can die in this chapter. I don't remember all the choices you get. I just remember you can either bring the androids with you, uh, including the guard. But again, we're doing the fully violent Marcus route, so if we get a choice to like kill some guards, I'm then I'm gonna do it. I won't hesitate, bitch. I might hesitate a little bit. Watch out. I'll find another way. Can Marcus still communicate with them even though he doesn't have his LED anymore? I, I think I might have asked that same question when I first played this. I don't know if it's like a decoration, you know, or if it has an actual purpose. Is it like a Bluetooth thing? Or is it just a display? I guess the Marcus I'm going to play this time is going to be fully for androids, but also fully aggressive towards humans. So if you're an android, he's on your side. If you're not, then let's go. Let's go, Simon. Where the hell are you going? Marcus, that way. What way? Where'd you go? Oh. Look at these hops. Some real jump man. Real Super Mario in here. I guess I will try to avoid the North Romance if I can, just to see something different. But really, if there was gonna be a, a run where you would have romanced her, it would be this one. Oh well. Cyber Life Warehouses. We have everything we're looking for. First, we have to get rid of that drone. I'll take care of it. Leave it to me. Let's do it. Yep. You okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Good job, Marcus. Quick, open the other crates and fill your bags. Take as much as you can. Okay, dokie. To grab him on private property. Your presence constitutes a level two infraction. I will notify security. See, at the time, I had no idea God. you could turn them deviant. God damn machine. God damn machine. <laughs> could kill the guards, run away. We need to grab this guy so he turns deviant first. John. See, I this is when help. he turned. Yeah. John. Uh, let's kill him. Okay. 
Damn, just like that, Marcus? They're like, holy shit, did you really do that? Okay, let's hurry up and keep getting some parts. We're not done here. Let's finish up and get out of here. Try to find some blue blood. We still don't have enough. Wait, I want to get the other androids. This time they're coming with us. I'm not leaving them behind. I hate these moving your controller input like it doesn't always work. If I can turn them, then they can help us steal more parts. Why aren't you like us? Don't you want to be free? Wait, did I have that option before? I think I did. But I assume it meant that, like, they weren't going to be deviant. You're free. Okay, yeah, it works. I guess this is the moment where, like, you would realize, oh, Marcus can turn them. Yeah, he's like just not realizing it, I guess. Hmm. That's all we can carry. Let's go. Are they gonna Take come or? Yeah, of course, man. He's on their side. We can't trust him. He he's one of us. us. We can't just leave him here. He's an android. He's coming. With us. It's too dangerous. All of them. They come with us. Oh, she doesn't like that, huh? I know where you can find more spare parts. What do you oh, mean? really? The trucks. They're full of bio components. Yeah, of course. They run on autopilot, but they can be driven manually with a key. Oh. Where is this key? I'm seeing a lot Down of new there, stuff. In the control station. There are oh. two human guards. We'll have to get the key without being noticed. Or we can kill them. Markers. Our bags are full. We got what we came for. Let's go before they catch us. There's a truck full of spare parts. There'd be enough for all of us. We can't pass this up. And if we get killed, our people will have nothing. We can't take that chance. It's too risky. Don't be such a coward. Let's get the key. Wait here. If I'm not back in ten minutes, go without me. Marcus. I'm coming with you. No, I'm going alone. It's not worth it for both of us to risk losing our lives. Aw, oh, man, they push Nord into you so much. No matter what you do. Oh, I hear dogs. Okay. Can I maybe go through a window? Let's see if we can do it. Goddamn dogs. What the fuck are they barking at? Could be the weather. They don't Threaten the guards? Yeah. Can I, can I take, take the gun? Kids camping this weekend. So much for that. Is Mike still in zone four? Looks like it. Let's take it. should be done already. Better off in here than out patrolling in that. They're gonna think he's human because he doesn't have an LED. You just signed your death warrant, buddy. Uh, tackle. Shit, I should have kicked. Should have kicked. Woo. Give me these quarter circles. This isn't Street Fighter. Choke him out. Ooh, damn, these are... Okay, these are quick. Take the key.
Oh, okay, did not get an option to shoot them. Let's hurry up. Okay, we have the we have the key. Did you get it? Sure did. Wasn't easy. Nice. Okay, get inside the truck. Oh, we're gonna have like a bunch more parts now. Nice. So are the other androids coming with us or no? Drive out of the docks. She's gonna be like, wow, he's really capable. But there's gotta be like guards or like a gate or something. I guess we can just roll through. Oh no, because everything's automated, so as soon as the truck gets by, they just... Plus the guys are not there to let us... Are they dead, though? I think I just knocked them out. I don't think they're dead. What does that look for? Is she like, don't feel bad about it? Is that what that look meant? Hey, how about that? Wow, so you can leave with a full truck of parts. Holy shit. And you come back with more androids. A truckload. We stole a whole truckload. We got bio components for everybody. We couldn't have done it without Marcus. That's right. Or John. I don't know about you, but there's something inside me that knows that I am more than what they say. I am alive, and they're not going to take that from me anymore. Our days of slavery are over. What humans don't want to hear, we will tell them. What they don't want to give, we take. We are people. We are alive. We are free. Is that speech different? Uh, if you did like something different, I'm not sure if it's the same speech. He's such a great leader for them. Oh. Oh, he's got blood on his hands. How about that? The first of many in this revolution. Marcus stole a truck full of parts. Huh. Incapacitate the guards. Okay, so they're not dead. Marcus spills blood. Holy shit. Okay, so I guess that's the the only guy we killed was the one with the knife. Hmm. All right, well, hey, we're seeing a lot of new things. That's the whole reason I wanted to do the second run. So that's pretty cool. So we're going to stop here for now. Man, this run is going way faster than the first, obviously, because I'm not looking around everywhere. Like, I'm not... Um. Next one is going to be Eden Club, yeah. Because I'm not taking time to explore every area and, like, you know investigating every little thing so it's going much faster let's go read a few magazines tainted love i don't think i saw this one sales of android intimate partners are exploding androids capable of satisfying customers sexual and emotional needs have been a phenomenal success such that cyberlife has been battling to keep stores stocked damn i won't say it's not realistic i think it is i think people would definitely be up for like an intimate partner that's an android that just kind of does what you say, uh, unfortunately. Though the idea seemed far-fetched initially, Cyberlife's gamble has paid off. These androids offer nothing less than a full partner experience for men or women. The advantages are many. Androids take care of the house, cook to a high standard, and fulfill any sexual fantasy without ever saying, not tonight, honey, I have a headache. Oh, come on. While Cyberlife initially focused on urban singles to buy its models, this year's record divorce rate seems to show that many men and women today prefer to live with an android than with a human partner. This won't help the already plummeting birth rate, which raises serious questions about the role androids play in our society. And then, time to pull the plug. A recent study led by Dr. P. Gorgansky has linked the amount of time we spend in front of the screens with the widespread antidepressant epidemic. From the time we wake up to the time we go to bed, we are surrounded by screen-based devices. 
kind of guilty of that myself. Of course, too much TV definitely won't make your eyes go square, but it can have other harmful consequences. These include poor sleep, strained eyesight, and lack of face-to-face -face interaction driving emotional underdevelopment and depression. Uh, guilty as charged. Gorgansky's study found that 2 in 3 people take antidepressants and lack of social interaction is the leading cause. Meanwhile, the average person spends 82% of their time communicating through a device rather than in person and relationships are suffering for it. In response, CyberLife has introduced a home psychologist add-on for your Android <laughs> in a bid to teach us how to communicate again. The upgrade costs $150... Wow, that's really cheap but can benefit the whole family with group therapy sessions and activities adapted for children and adults. That sounds great. But Gorgansky is skeptical. Our society is hooked on technology. I don't think yet more technology is the answer. Just go outside and talk to someone. <laughs> yeah. Residents in the Detroit suburb of Camden were witness to a thrilling chase today after a police manhunt, including roadblocks and dozens of police interviews, flushed out a, fel a felony fugitive. But this is a fugitive with a difference, the suspect is an android. The rogue AX400 model is thought to be suffering from an extremely rare malfunction and took extreme measures to avoid police, even dashing across a busy highway to avoid pursuing officers. Eyewitness statements are inconclusive and with no official report it's impossible to say for sure what really happened. But local news correspondents are looking into the case at this very moment. No CyberLife spokesperson was available for comment and the speculation looks set to continue. And how androids alter your brain. Interesting. Talking to machines is changing the way we communicate. Most people spend more time talking to androids, smartphones, tablets and entertainment systems than they do to other people. A recent study has found that this kind of talking, called common-led communication, is characterized by instructions and orders rather than persuasion, humor or intimacy. That adjustment to our everyday speech is altering our brains with persuasion skills getting weaker through lack of use. That's very interesting. This is especially true of younger generations. Common lead communication has fostered a generation of adolescents with highly limited social skills. In the same study, young people were found to have developed very different communication centers in their brains. That's totally true. Because if children and teenagers grew up mostly like giving uh, commands to androids, then they wouldn't have the same communication skills. I mean, you would still talk to a lot of humans, of course, but if you spend a lot of your time just saying like, oh, Siri, cook me dinner, Siri, open TV, Siri, go buy groceries, you know, then you would develop a different way for sure. Employers have long complained of the difficulty in finding graduates who know how to influence and convince others, like a salesman. But with people, especially young people, spending more and more time with their machines, it's difficult to see how the situation will improve. That's quite interesting. That's an aspect you don't really think about right away, but like, it does make a lot of sense. Alright, so this is going to be another very long episode, but uh, we're progressing very quickly. I think maybe like four episodes is going to be all we need to go through the whole game over again, if we keep going at this pace. I love all the new stuff I'm seeing, like there's so much content to this game, and the more I'm seeing, the more I think every person's experience was probably very different. Like, I think my original run probably had the most likely outcome uh, being done, like just people being very kind, being maybe more on the cautious side. That's kind of like our natural human instinct, but I could be surprised. Maybe a lot of people tried different things. Maybe people went the more violent route. Nevertheless, it's quite interesting to see all these new things that we haven't seen the first time. So hope you guys are enjoying it. But that's going to be it for today, so until the next time, I have fun playing this, hope you had fun watching it, and I'll catch you in the next episode for even more Detroit Become Human. À la prochaine!